Welcome back. We're going to learn my favorite topic, color. So first of all, I'm going to create some shapes. You can draw them by using the options in the toolbar, or if you prefer, you can draw them with the pen tool. Okay. Now there are different ways to get color. We already seen and have a slight, you know, slight idea of how to get them. The first way is by selecting the object and then go to the top menu, upper menu and select any swatch that is available right here. For example, this. And just by clicking, you're going to be capable to have all the hues that you are selecting, okay? Now, this is one way. I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to duplicate. Remember that if you want to duplicate, you just have to hold, um, select the objects, hold, and press Option if you have a Mac, or Alt if you have a PC. Now, the other way to get colors, let me place them all in white, so we don't have any um, misinformation right here. I'm going to select this one. This is in white. The other way to get colors, in case I don't want to get it in the upper menu, is by clicking the toolbar twice. And the, every time that I click here, I'm going to be capable to select the color. This is spectrum. You can move the slider, like I'm doing it right now. And every time you click, in the big square, you're going to be selecting the color. The color is usually going to be placed right here at the top. Probably you're going to get this warning, and this is important for you to know. This is telling you like, hey, it looks so bright, but the reality is that it's not going to be so bright at all. Take a look in your case. This blue is not exactly this one, okay? Because it has a, warm, um, a gamut warning. And um, this is like when the color is too bright because it has the light of the screen. That doesn't mean that when you print it, it's going to look the same way, okay? So this is another way to get the colors. Now, I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to select this other, and I'm going to select this green, okay? Usually, if you select as really, really bright colors, this is going to happen, okay? This is telling you this is the color, how it's going to look, even though it seems so bright. Uh-uh, it's not. And the other way is the uh, another main reason is because I have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, okay? When I created this new document, I created it as a printing do document because we're going to see something that is called Pantone, something that is called cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, okay? Now, what else do we have on this window? We have something uh, besides the spectrum and the color that we're picking. The only web colors is going to be limited to that. I, I don't usually use it like that because I want to have millions of options, okay? This is going to be limited, and if we have a combination of process color, that means cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, RGB colors, hue saturation and balance, and hex, oof, we're going to have a lot of options of colors, okay? Now, what is everything that I just said? And you're going to say, Brenda, what the heck, what is that? There are different ways to manage color. One of them is by hue, saturation, and balance. Hue in Spanish would be tono, saturation, saturación, be, uh, balance, balance, okay? This is commonly used by people that manage colors and photos, okay? Then we have RGB, rojo, verde, y azul. RGB is the color mode that is commonly used for the screens, for television, for the iPad, for the phone, okay? Is not meant to be printed. And then we have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This is for printing. Printing, uh, when I say printing, it's like printing magazines, posters, um, corporate uh, identity, thousands of books, you know, not 10 or five. That's not a huge amount. I'm talking about thousands of thousands, okay? And the last one, but not the least, we have this. It's, it is made by six digits. These digits are going to be numbers and letters. It's a combination, okay? And it's usually used by programming, you know, when you're programming software and they're called hex color. Hex means six, that's why it has six digits, okay? So these are different ways to get color too. And the other way is by clicking on this window where it says color swatches. When you click it, the options that you're going to have right here are the same that are right here at the top, but uh, they're sh sharing with you the combination of the colors that they have to get this as a result, okay? so. Let me go to the color models and click OK. So you can get all the colors from this area. And let me just have them like with grays and different colors too. 
The good thing is that the software is going to give you opportunity to have some defined textures like this ones. If you have them available, click them and try to understand them. And let me see, this is a gradient. They are already available. And of course, we're going to find out how to do that. Okay, just in a couple of videos. So this is how you can get color. Now, we have already seen two ways. Third, please go to the, the uh, menu, the window that we have on the right. If you don't have this window, remember that you can go window and then click color. So let me move this. When you have this one selected, you have this option. That means that you can combine any mode that is available that I just showed you before. For example, this is cyan, this is magenta, this is yellow, and this is black. These are the printing colors, okay? They're usually called in Mexico and around the world, process color. And then if we're going to use something that is going to be just digital, instead of having here color mode in cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, we're going to select RGB. That means that we're going to have red, green, and blue. These are called digital or web colors, okay? So we have to keep in mind and remember always this, that this is for printing and this is for digital. Now, this combination of colors is quite hard if you're not used to, to do, you know, um, design using a tablet. Why? We'll see how. I'm going to draw some circles so you can see the combination of the colors, okay? So um, let me make a combination of these three. Okay, so if we have red and then we combine it with green and then we combine it with blue, let me just put all of this, the result that we're going to have is white, okay? Why? Because you're including all the colors possible in digital, okay? How do I know that? Let's go here to the scroll. If I put 100% of uh, 255 of red 255 of green and 255 of um, blue, I'm going to get white. Even the text that was in black <laughs> turned into, let me just change it, okay? The result that you're going to have is white. I'm going to change this into this, okay? Now, let me have this as a result, result and result. If you have red, and you combine it with green. So red, let me just change it right now. My apologies, I made a mistake here. And green. When you combine these two, you're going to get yellow. So as you can see, it's not like using the watercolor that you used to have when you were a child. Let me just duplicate this. Yellow. If you have red again, and then you combine it with blue and you have 255 and 255 the result is going to be this purple thing but it's is really called magenta it's like pink oh i was not aware that i erased this one and if you have the combination of 255 of green 255 of um, blue, my apologies. The result is going to be cyan. So making a combination by RGB is quite hard because it's like, if I combine red, green and blue, I'm going to have something black, you know, with watercolor and acrylic paint. So that's why in digital color, the combination is quite different, okay? Now, how it works in cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. 
I'm going to use the same uh, web page so we can have it. I hope this uh, works for you to understand how the combination of colors affects if it's digital or if it's printing, okay, printed. So I'm going to have this here and I'm going to have it to the side. I'm going to move it here. In cyan, magenta, yellow and black, it works different. I'm going to change the mode, the color mode by clicking the corner. So if I have 100% of cyan, I'm going to have 100% of cyan. And I had 100% um, of magenta. And I have 100% of um, yellow. The result that I am going to have is something that is called black. Okay, it's, it's like more real for the acrylic paint that you have used in, in the past, right? Let me oh, get closer because I'm distorting it. Oh, ahí está. So we have black. Registration is how it's called in design, okay? Now, if you have cyan, instead of using 255, as you have seen, if you have cyan, and you combine it with 100% of magenta, the result that you're going to have is 100 of cyan, 100 of magenta, blue. If you make a combination of 100% of cyan, 100% of yellow, the combination that you're going to have is green. Is like when you mix green and blue when you're using acrylic paint and the last one when you use a combination of magenta with yellow the result that you're going to have is let me show it to you drums red so I, here it goes this combination is more um, similar to the one that you have been using with acrylic paint. It's not the same, but it's similar. And as you can see in both ways, in RGB and cyan magenta yellow black, you're going to have the hex color as well. Now, why do I say it's similar? For example, if I know that magenta and yellow tones red, for example, let me have an example here. Depending on the percentage of the number that you type down here is the result that you're going to have. So. If I place um, maybe in magenta in this quantity, magenta in 51 and yellow in 87, I can get orange. Now, how about if I want to get, for example, green, but lime green? I know that I had to select these two colors. It's like combining like the tones that you have, you know, when you were a child. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake right here and I, I just don't want you to get confused in case you want to take a screenshot. For example, if I want to get a line here, maybe instead of having too much cyan, I'm going to have too much yellow and then I'm going to change it here. Okay, this is how you can start doing the combination. It's similar of the quantity that you're using. So this is for digital and this is for printing. Okay, if you study graphic design, in my case, and when I study in the 90s, it took me one year, not one semester or one class, okay, like you're having right now. I have one class that was called a color theory and the other was color applied. So it takes a lot of time, but this is like the summary. So this is how it works when we're going to select colors. Now I'm going to close this window. And in case you see that there are different options, we have grayscale. If you want to use, uh, you know, in this case, when we talk about grayscale, we're talking about ink. One ink, black. That means that gray is not a color, it's a percentage of black. Okay, this is important for you to know. Now, I'm going to close this one. So we have seen three ways to get colors. Other way is this one, it's called swatch. The same colors that you see here are the same that are here at the top. Okay, now remember that we got these textures. Maybe you want to get them too. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to draw some rectangles here and I'm going to make a few but I know that you're going to get more so I'm going to have this one there are two ways to get colors every time you are in swatch at the top or here in the window 
If you click it here, there's an option that says open swatch library. Remember that every time you see a corner that has three lines of three spots or points is because there is an extra. So we have all of this and this is um, like a mix of colors that were already organized to send a specific message. For example, maybe you are designing something for food. You can select here, uh, let me move my, <laughs> my floating face. You want to do something for food. If you are doing something for a beverage, these are the common combinations for beverage. Maybe, maybe it's like, mm, I'm not so sure about it. Maybe you want to have um, the tones for ice cream. So here you have vanilla, pistachio, strawberry, whatever, chocolate. No, these are colors that are already made by someone else that suggests like, hey, if you're going to do a, a color palette, these are the most common ones used, you know, for ice creams or for beverage or for fruits and so on. Now, if you want to have a texture like this, where can you get it? You come again to the corner, open switch library, and there's something that is called patterns, okay? You're going to have graphics, you're going to have uh, lines, you're going to have a lot of options. So, if you select basic graphics, you can have dots like this with a specific volume. If you don't like dots, maybe you like lines. I'm going again to patterns and I'm going to select lines and I'm going to change, select the object that I want to apply lines. And the good thing is that you don't have to draw them because they're going to be already available for you. Okay. Now, but Brenda, you were supposed to show me with color. Yes, I know. Open Swatch Library, Patterns, and there's something that is called Decorative and Nature. For example, if you select a Decorative, you can select this one. And I'm going to select one of them. And you're going to be capable to see this type of textures that are already made, okay? It's up to you how you're going to use them. And the last but not the least, they even have animal printing. Let me see texture patterns. In nature, they have animal skins. For example, you want to do zebra, snake, crocodile, peacock. Here you have it. So this is how you can get color and you can start making something that looks more attractive. Now, the ones that are here, if I'm not wrong, let me see if I can find them because they're available here in patterns, decorative. Maybe they're in flash. Yes. You can have um, all these patterns, as you can see. I have flowers. And uh, let me see which one else I do. Uh, here I have another one. So there is by clicking, you know, depending on what you're, how you're going to use it. One important thing that I have to, to warn you, depending on the size, that you draw it is how it's going to be adapted. For example, I just made this uh, small. How did I select all of them? I click and drag and select them all. I press shift, okay? Now, take a look to this one. I'm going to make like this. It's going to adapt to the size. I mean, this one is smaller. Let me just duplicate it so you can see. Depending on the size, it's going to be adapted in, a, in proportion, okay? So since the beginning, you have to be really careful to define the size and the proportion that you want to use. Okay, so this is how you can get some colors. Now, Pantone uh, is an important brand that defines the color for brands. For example, it's a company. They created colors since ooh, the beginning of the 19th century. They define, for example, the color for Coca-Cola. You know, is 495C. How do I can how can I find it? Usually, if you're a designer, you're going to have something that is called a Pantone ruler, like I do, and you're going to look for it. Pantone 485. Let me see. So, this is the Pantone that is used for Coca-Cola. Now, as a designer, I have to buy Pantone for everything for solid, for um, 
process for metallics for phospho for oof, a lot of things now as they had um a fight pantoni and adobe in the new adobe illustrator and photoshop and in design they're not any longer available you have to buy the pantoni that means that you have to pay for adobe and you have to pay for pantoni and there is an option to get the pantoni color as we as, as you're a student and you're not paying for it, I'm, I'm not going to do that for you because uh, I don't want you to spend $180 per month. So the only thing that I want you to find out is like, if you want to do Pantone, you can come here and select a similar Pantone. For example, I have Coke. Uh, one that is really famous is this one, Tiffany Blue. The number is uh, 1837 because it, it was the year when it was founded. The thing with this color is that it can be only used by Tiffany. You can't use it. And even though you want to make the combination, you're never going to get the exact color because they registered and use it just for, for themselves, okay? Another one who use a Pantone, like, let me uh, take a look. I, another brand, Lego. You're going to see that there are some colors that are just defined for specific um, brands. This one says 116C. Let's validate if it's real. And it is, it's right here. Now, every time you see C, it means that it's going to be printed in a shiny paper. Every time you see U, ooh, it's because it's going to be printed in an uncoated paper. That means that it's not going to be glossy, okay? That's the difference. I'm not telling you to buy any ruler. Um, this one is like 4,000 pesos. This one is expensive because this one at the back, it tells you when it was open because um, they have like um, due dates. They don't last forever. This one, the one that I have right here is from 2001. That means that it has 23 years. And this is the one that I usually bring to the classes when it's face to face because you can touch them. but in real life, we never touch the Pantone because you can have, you know, some dirt in your hand and you can d destroy the color. Now, um, the reality is that as a designer, you need to have this and this, just in case if you're going to print it. That means that you have to invest around 20,000 pesos, more or less. I have like eight. And of course, there are special promotions at the beginning of every year because it's like, oh, I'm going to have my new roller. But this is just for printing. Now we have to be open-minded and be aware that everything is becoming digital and people is not printing any longer, but some books and some logos, they're still remaining using Pantone. Usually the way to get it, it was really easy, but now it's not available. And as I wanted to give you like the last version of Illustrator, that's why I'm doing this video. I'm going back to Illustrator. How you used to get the color in the past. Well, you come to the corner. Well, I was using this one, right? Now, let me go to the top. You used to get it from a space that says color books. And here you used to have Pantone, Pantone solid, Pantone coated, Pantone metallic, Pantone and so on. Now the colors that you see, color books are here. There are another companies that develop color as well, but they are not the ones for designers. Now. You're going to see, for example, colored books. Maybe they are going to, maybe they're going to change and they're now going to be famous. They're going to have these specific colors. Every time that you see that it has like a point, is an ink that it was a, exclusively made with, um, you know, with a special ink. That's the only thing. So every time you see in your swatch, every time you, by the way, you select a color, it's going to be saved in the swatch. You're going to see that um, there's a point and that means that it's a special color. For example, take a look right now. Remember that we were using uh, this one uh, just a couple of minutes ago, RGB and Cian Magenta Yellow and Black. Now it's telling me that this color is from Toyo. Toyo is another brand that develops color and that's the only thing. Maybe as Pantone has right now decided like uh, want to charge more money, maybe these other companies are going to develop their own facilities to make our life as a designer easy. I don't know, but I wanted to keep it real for you. Okay. So uh, as this is my favorite topic, 
Remember that color is capable to send and share a lot of messages. We have to be aware that um, the color that we select can affect the reception of the message. If we design something in black and white in China, they are going to relate it, you know, to death. If we use red for our wedding invitation, I know what you're thinking. Nothing that is exactly good, right? So how can you get and get the best use of color? I'm going to go to the web. You can go to press pause and then open the browser. And at the top in the search area, press down color Adobe, please. Not that please, just Adobe color. And you're going to see all these options that are available for you. Oops, let me get it here. Okay. Um, I don't want to use this one right now. Okay. So in this web page, you're going to be capable to create some frames. You can get inspiration from a photo, for example, to get all the colors palette that are inside that picture. You can look for some trends that are made by other people. For example, this is the trends for 2024. In fashion, for example, you can see what's the color that is going to be really nice or the, the more likes that I, you know from people that are designers and you can create your own, okay? Now, this is important. I, I, I promise you that this video, I know that it seems to be long, but I hope you're enjoying it. There are different ways to get color. We have seen that we have RGB, HSV, and LAV. LAV is new, you haven't seen it before. Why we don't have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black? Because we're doing it on the web. There can be, I mean, the color that you see in the screen is never going to be the same way of printing it. Remember, sometimes you see this beautiful orange and you print it and it looks brown, okay? That's why. So, analogous is when the colors that are at the side of one color. For example, the analogous of this green is this yellow and this other green. The analogous of this one is the, this green and this purplish, okay? The colors that you see right here, as you can see, they're combined by RGB because by looking at them through the screen. And we have the hex color because if you want to program, here you have them. The good thing is that if you're paying for the license for Adobe, you can create a color theme and then you can open it. Remember that we just saw like um, the library, we saw, for example, for food, for kids stuff and so on. You can save your own. That's a good thing. If you keep it legal, you have a lot of benefits, okay? Analogous are the colors that are at the side. That means that if you want to do something that is dual, that it has not contrast, this is the one that is going to work for you. Monochromatic, mono means one. That means that you're going to use one tone. And all the percentage, you know, in, in saturation and brightness that is going to be included in this color. Mono, that means one. Triad means three. That means that you can make a combination of three colors, like I'm doing here. And it seems to be like they, when they are together, they have like a specific match. They look like that they combine between each, uh, all of them, okay? We have a complementary. If you want to have the best contrast, always use complementary colors. They're the ones that are in the opposite side of the color wheel. That means orange and blue, red and green, purple and yellow, okay? Usually, if you want to have this contrast, this is the one that is going to work for you. And of course, we have split complementaries when you want to make a combination like a triad, you know, three colors. And um, this is new because um, every time someone do a post on Instagram, sometimes they don't want just two colors, you know, they want uh, like a third one for complementary color. That's to complement the message they want to send. And um, um, the, the rest that we have here, you know, is like a combination that assures you to have like um, that, that all the colors are going to have like the same percentage of brightness, the same percentage of darkness, the same percentage of, um, of combination, you know, because they're going to be located in the same spot. Now, what else do we have here? You can see here that you can download the, the color that you just made. You can extract a theme. Now, um, I love uh, a lot of Lego. This is something that I really enjoy. Let me select this image. I'm going to download this one. Ah, oh, it's in, I hate the new version of uh, Twitter. 
Let me just see something from Lego. I'm going to type down Lego. And I'm going to select this one. I'm going to download the image. It's important that you have access to the image. Okay. I'm going, and it has to be in JPG. That's the format. I'm going to save it in my desktop. Now I'm going back to the page. I'm going to select a file. And automatically it's going to show me the colors that are represented in an image. Okay. The good thing is that in case it's selecting something that I don't like, I can come here and change it. Okay. Now here you're going to see the hex color as well, and you can copy and paste it in the new pro, uh, illustrator. For example, if you're using it and you can select how bright, mute, deep you want the colors by just clicking here, you see? So the good thing is that you can come here and Lego Brenda. You can type uh, some tags um, hashtag, where is hashtag, hashtag Lego. I am sorry, I, I have another um, keyboard. Aquí está. Lego colors. And you can include blue, bright, green, rainbow, and so on. You can publish it, Lego, save it. Many people is going to have access to that and I'm going to have access to my library. As you can see, I have my library as well. You can replace the image. You can put something else that you have. I don't have pictures right here. I... No, I don't have uh, pictures in this computer, but that's how you can have like a mood board and select the colors. So if you want to have ideas and to get advantage of the use of color, come here, use and explore, see what's trendy now, get inspiration, see the trends, you know, in fashion in graphic design and illustration. This is good because somehow this one in user experience and user interface is how uh, apps are developed. So in case in the future, you have some project that is going to be done by this. Here you have the colors that are trendy. And remember, you don't have to select the trends. You will have to select something that is going to last when you create a brand, but you can adapt yourself to the trends. Okay. It's like if Coca-Cola, if they decide to change ah, the trend right now is blue, I'm going to change all my cans and all my advertising to blue. We know that everyone is going to get lost, right? But they know how to adapt to the trends. Like, okay, now it's user experience. Now it's everything in green. And if you take a look to their social media, you're going to see that they're using a lot of green. Okay. So I hope this works for you and sorry because it's a little bit long, but it's going to worth it. Okay. <laughs> Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.